Well, good morning. It's, it's good to see you all this morning. Thank you for being here. We're working with our sound system this morning. Got a little hum in there. I'm not sure if they're aware of that, but we get, get that squared away right there. There it is. Sounds good. Sounds good. So thank you again for coming. It's, it's good to see you all. Do we have any announcements that we need to make before the, the service? Um, don't forget, as you know, we had refreshments before the service, and they will be here again after the service. So we invite you to take a few moments to do that. Also, our United Women in Faith, our, our women's group will be meeting. Uh, where will you all be meeting, Carol Ann? Okay. And as Charlotte just said, the, the women's Bible study is at 6 o'clock on Tuesday, and our choir rehearses uh, at 6 o'clock on Wednesday. And next Sunday will be Mother's Day, a very special day, of course, in the life of the church. And you'll see a whole bunch of other stuff going on that are listed in the bulletin. We're, we're not going to go through all that today, but are there any other announcements we need to make this morning? Okay, well, we have come to worship. We always take care of business first, you know, just get that out of the way. And, um, and so we have come to worship, and so I'm going to ask you if you would please join me for our call to worship. Let's stand together as you're able. It's printed in the bulletin, and it will be on the screen, and we'll read it responsibly. We have come here this morning to worship our God. In an hour, we will leave here renewed and refreshed. May God give us the words to say as we witness to his love. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, as we come before you in Jesus' name this morning, we, your people, are going to praise you with all of our might. Lord, we praise your holy name, and we give you our praise and thanksgiving because you have forgiven our sins and you've healed our diseases. We praise you because you have redeemed our lives from sin and you have crowned us with compassion. We praise you, Lord, because you satisfy our desires with good things and you renew our lives every day. And Father, we praise you and honor you, for you are our God and we are your people. So accept our praise and worship this morning as we gather together in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, we have the opportunity during our times of worship on Sunday morning to bring our tithes and offerings. This is our opportunity to give God part of the blessing that he's given to us. And so with that in mind and knowing that when we give, it is literally making a difference in the lives of many people. With that in mind, let's now bring our tithes and offerings to God. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for blessing us each day as you do. Your love, Lord, is beyond our understanding. It's beyond our comprehension. Yet we know that you love us so, so very much. And because you love us, you pour out your blessings upon us. And Father, we want to be part of those blessings. We want to be part of the blessings that go out to other people. And so, Lord, by bringing our tithes and offerings now, we know that we help make that possible. And we actually can open some doors for others to find you. So thank you for giving us the opportunity to give to you. And thank you for blessing these gifts as you do. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> okay, well, let's spend a few moments and let's go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, as we come to you in this moment of prayer, 
come to us right now and quiet our hearts from all of our distractions. Settle down upon us and draw near to us as we draw near to you. You, O oh Lord, are the creator of all things. You are the giver of life, and every good and perfect gift comes from you. Lord, our words are not adequate to express how our hearts have changed since we first met you and accepted you into our lives. You've made all the difference in our lives, Lord, and so we love you and we praise you, and we give you thanks for your unending love for us. Lord, there's not, there isn't anything in us or about us that you don't completely understand. You know us better than we know ourselves. Therefore, you know what we need to admit and that we need to admit our weaknesses to you and we need to ask you for help and strength and courage. We can't rescue ourselves, Lord. You are our only hope. And so, Lord, we confess that the, the busyness of our schedules many times leaves only leftovers for you. So we ask that you'll give us the courage to push away from our busyness and help us find our true identity in you. We confess this morning that our critical, always critiquing attitudes lead us away from contentment and gratefulness. So we ask you today to cleanse us from being critical and to put a spirit of gratefulness in our hearts. We confess our half-hearted devotion that leaves us with an unsatisfied relationship with you. So we ask that you will replace our cold half-heartedness with a fire for you and wholehearted devotion. We confess our rebellion to you in ways and in, in our desire to rely on our own cleverness. So we ask you to show us the knowledge of your will and give to us your spiritual wisdom and understanding. We also confess the fear that we secretly carry that cripples us in so many ways. So we ask you today to save us from the great oppressor, Satan, who threatens us with fear. We confess the sin that is unique for each of us and that holds us back from being truly free. So we ask you today to set us free somehow, some way, from the sin that has gripped our hearts and chained our spirits. Lord, thank you for being the friend who will never leave us or forsake us. Thank you for being our teacher, showing us the way we should go. And thank you for being our protector, helping us stand firm in you. And thank you for being our Savior, rescuing us from the chains of our sin. And all this, Lord, we pray together for the sake of your name, the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's turn our attention now to the reading of God's Word. Through 13. The Parable of the Ten Virgins. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. And at midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise ones, Give us some oil of your lamp, 
our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell the oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. These are the words of God. Well, a number of years ago, Barbara and I took a vacation to the Caribbean. And although I thoroughly enjoyed it, it was an awesome trip. It was a wonderful vacation. And even so, there was a problem. Now, I know that you probably will not believe this. You probably have trouble understanding this. But I'm very organized and structured. I know that's a shock to you. But, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But in the Caribbean, everything there is on island time, okay? Which means that whatever is taking place, the event itself is more important than the time that it actually occurs. And so as a result, <laughs> Mr. Organized and Structured here spent a whole lot of time waiting, and it drove me crazy. But I finally learned that it was not unusual for an event to actually begin an hour or more later than it was scheduled because in the Caribbean, that just wasn't all that important. We'll get it done. It's just not that important to watch the clock. Now, Barbara said I could learn a lot from those people, but that's a subject for a different time. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but it's this sense of island time, of, of expectancy, yet unknowing of being prepared and yet waiting that jumped out at me when I read this scripture today. The story Jesus is talking about his second coming, when he has promised us that he will return to earth to claim his children, those who are ready to meet him and take them home with him forever. Now in the chapters just before this, what we read today, Jesus clearly tells us, we do not know the day and time of his return. But until then, we must always be ready to meet him. And so to illustrate this point, Jesus told the story that we just read of a time just before a wedding, when everyone was waiting for the bridegroom to arrive at the bride's house for the wedding celebration. And even the bridesmaids, who were very important to the bride and groom, are waiting patiently, you see. But when the groom does not arrive at the time they expected, I got a feeling a story occurred in the Caribbean, <laughs> but uh, five of them ran out of oil for the lamps. And by the time they got back from purchasing more oil, the groom had arrived and the doors were shut and it was too late to join the feast. And Jesus says in verse 13 this morning, therefore keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. In other words, ready or not, Jesus is coming. However, if we're honest with ourselves, if we're really honest, we, we've got to admit that this is something that many of us usually pay little or no attention to. I mean, you, you know, we hear Jesus say he may return at any moment, and it may be even today, and we go, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, and we think we have all the time in the world because we don't know when it's going to happen. And we know what the Bible says, and we know what Jesus himself said. But really, we kind of figure, it's really not going to happen in our lifetime. How many years have this, has this earth been here? How many people have been on earth and it hasn't yet happened yet? Now, why be concerned about it? Why worry about it? Just live your life. You really have all the time in the world. Let's be honest. Isn't that where we kind of figure it? Isn't that what we normally think about when we hear about this? I mean, how many of you ever take time to think about Jesus' return 
and when it will come. We just don't think about that much. But what if it did happen today? What if it did? You know, we believe the Bible, and the Bible says that it could happen. And Jesus clearly told us that, you know, being prepared spiritually for his return is not something we can purchase at the store. Being prepared for his return is not something we can borrow from somebody at the last minute when it happens. And Jesus also clearly tells us that our relationship with God must be ongoing every day. It must be our own. That is why I believe the story really speaks to us. Because just like the ten bridesmaids, we too have received an invitation. We've too been invited to join Jesus himself at the great wedding feast when he returns for us. And if we're going to accept his invitation of freedom and of forgiveness and of eternal life, then just like the bridesmaids, we too must be ready. We too must stay ready not just for a time in the future, but ready at every moment to meet him with our lamps trimmed and our oil ready. You know, one Sunday morning in the church at the end of a worship service, a 75-year-old church member who had been an active leader in the church for many, many years, he came and he kneeled at the altar and he repented of his sin and he rededicated his life to Christ. During the week prior to that, he'd been in an auto accident, and he'd almost been killed. He had come close to the time when the door of his life on earth would be shut forever. And after he prayed at the altar that Sunday morning, he turned to the congregation, and he told them what had happened that week. And he said the part that scared him the most was not that he almost lost his life. No, the part that scared him the most was that at the time he knew he was not ready to meet God. He still had unfinished business to take care of with God in order to be ready. And that Sunday, on his knees at the altar, he took care of that unfinished business. And he said that week he came to fully realize that not only that our lives can be snuffed out in a moment, but that Jesus could return just as quickly. And when he realized that, he also realized how critically important it is for everyone at every moment to be ready to meet Jesus. Because ready or not, Jesus is coming. Have you noticed in the story that Jesus told this morning that we read, there's nothing that distinguishes between the five bridesmaids who were ready and the five who were not. Apparently all of them looked the same on the outside, they all had the same outward appearances and all appeared to be ready. But when that crucial moment arrived, only five were actually ready, and the foolish ones were not. They, they Time ran out, and the door was shut, and they heard the sad words, I do not know you. You know, just like the foolish bridesmaids, I think there are many people today, there are even many people who sit in churches every Sunday morning who are also going to be shut out and told, I do not know you, because many people, even some people who sit in churches, are not living their lives in obedience to God. They're not living their lives in relationship with him every day. Many are living their lives like they think they have all the time in the world, when in reality, Jesus could return at any moment. You know, and I've heard people say, I've heard that one phrase in there, where the bridegroom said, I do not know you. I've heard people get hung up on that one. I'm going to talk about it just for a minute. You know, I've heard many people say, if God loves us so much, why does God close the door? Why does God say, I don't know you? Why does God condemn people to all of eternity separated from God? It's a valid question, isn't it? We've all asked that at one time or another. And the answer to that question is real simple. God doesn't. He doesn't condemn us. He doesn't do any of that. The Bible tells us God loves us so much that he wants everyone to be saved. He wants everyone to have eternal life with him. So therefore, knowing what God calls us to do and knowing what God has done for us, we are the ones who decide where we will spend eternity. 
We are the ones who make that decision, not God. We are the ones who, through our sin and our disobedience, through trying to make God conform to what we want God to be, yeah, we are the ones who decide to spend eternity forever separated from God. And the Bible goes on to tell us that when we do this, God grieves for us as a father grieves for his lost child. And just like these 10 bridesmaids that we talked about today, we too have been given lamps. Our lamps are the Bible and the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And we too have been given oil. We've been given the oil of repentance and confession and forgiveness. And through these gifts and through what God has done for us, we have been told and we've been clearly shown what it takes to get our lives in order and to get right with God. But even with all of that, even with God reaching out to us and calling us back to him, I guess the question we all need to ask ourselves is simply this. Have we actually done it? Are we really ready to meet him? Because ready or not, Jesus is coming. I think the message this morning is a message for all of us who claim the name of Jesus, who claim to be Christians. It's, it's a message for all of us who sit in church every Sunday thinking maybe we're ready, but we're wasting our oil while we wait and who would do nothing our lo- in our lives about what we know is wrong and contrary to what God wants for us and for our lives. Yeah, as I look around this morning, I, all of us bridesmaids look alike. You know, we all do, yeah. But what we really need to ask ourselves is simply this. Is there sin in my life from which I have not repented and turned away? Have I given control of all of my life to my God, to my Savior? Ah, you know, we can fool the pastor. We can fool other people, but we can't fool God. He knows what's in our hearts. In just a few moments, we're going to come and receive this wonderful gift of Holy Communion. And as you come to receive this gift of grace from God, this gift of love from your God, will you also come and maybe take care of your unfinished business as well? Come and receive this gift of love from God and take a few minutes to give him your gift, the gift of your acceptance and your repentance and your rededication of your life to him. You know, I believe the the Holy Spirit is truly speaking to us this morning. And I believe he's telling us that we all need to do this right here this morning. We all need to do this right now. So as you come today, think about what God is saying to you this morning. Think about God, what God is calling you to do. And put away your pride. Give up trying to control your life. Confess your sins to God. Trim out those lamps. And get right with God this morning. Get to a place where you know you need to be so you can truly experience his healing and his cleansing power every day. You know, the Bible says that we do not know the day or the hour when Christ will return. So come today and confess your sin. Let him forgive you and heal you and set you free so that you know something? Instead of saying, ready or not, Jesus is coming, you'll be able to say with the confidence and all of the assurance that he gives you, even so, Lord Jesus, come. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for calling us this morning to a time of repentance, to a time of kind of making an assessment of where we are, Lord, we, deep down in our minds, we figure, oh, you're not coming back anytime soon. That's kind of what we think. But we know that's not correct, Lord. We don't know when you're coming back. And it could be in these next few moments. It could be a thousand years from now. We don't know. But, Lord, none of us who have heard the gospel message and who have accepted the gospel message and, and are living our lives with you, none of us want to run out of oil. We want to be ready for when you come back. And, Lord, we don't want to complicate it or make it difficult. 
All we want to do this morning, Lord, is say, Lord, I, I, I may not be ready. There's things in my life that I've been doing or thinking or saying or whatever that I, I know need to change. And I just simply want to do that this morning. And, and I know that through the power of your Holy Spirit, those changes can happen. I can turn toward you probably more than I ever have. And I can live my life with you each and every day, confessing my sins, walking with you, praising you and glorifying you, and sharing the good news of the gospel with others. Father, that's all you ask of us. You don't ask us to be perfect. You just ask us to walk with you and to allow you to, to carry us and to lead us and guide us. So thank you, Lord, for reminding us of this. Thank you for telling us what we need to hear. And thank you for giving us the courage to step up this morning to take care of that business so that every day we can say, even so, Lord Jesus, come. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. I love Sundays when we share Holy Communion. What a gift. What a blessing. What a joy it is when we come and we are able to celebrate these wonderful gifts that God is bringing to us anew each day. And you know, we are reminded, we are reminded when we come for Holy Communion about what Jesus did for us 2,000 years ago when he died and rose again. And Holy Communion also gives us something tangible that we can taste and eat and feel that reminds us that, hey, he's here right now. He's here with me right now. And then he gives us his promise through this bread and cup of his consistency, of his promise that he will be with us forever, and that there is nothing that can separate us from his love. I thought about it coming in this morning, driving up the road, and, and, and I thought about what is Holy Communion, what does it mean? And one of the things that comes to my mind is that we are all kind of, our souls are dry. We're bombarded with so much stuff every week, every day, every hour. There's so much stuff going on around us, and we have to deal with so many things, and it tends to make our souls dry. And we need to come to him and be nourished. We need to drink from that fountain of life, as we find in Holy Communion, to be nurtured and to be nourished by our God. So as you come this morning, and, and oh, by the way, let me say this. I, I usually say this, but let me say it now. If you're not a member of this church, you may not know whether you're supposed to or you're allowed to come or not, because churches do have certain rules. We believe that this is not our table. This is the table of God. And everyone, regardless of whether you're a member of a church, nothing, doesn't matter. None of it matters. The only thing that matters is Jesus Christ died for you. And he rose again for you, and he loves you, and he wants you to come and to experience his grace in your lives. And so if there's any doubt about whether you should come or not, please come. Bring your dry soul this morning. Be nourished, be nurtured, and let's together drink from this fountain of life. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he was celebrating the Passover meal with his disciples, and he broke the bread, held it in front of them, and said, this is my body, broken for you. When the meal was over, he held up the cup, he blessed it, and he said, this is my blood shed for you the blood of the new covenant. Receive this, all of you. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you this morning that we can come to you and feast at your bounteous supply. We thank you, Lord, that you are standing here to nourish our dry and barren souls, that you want to come and refresh us and renew us, and that it is your desire 
that we experience you in a special way this morning. So, Father, as we prepare to come, we ask that you'll send your Holy Spirit to be on this gift of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that as we are renewed in your love this day, we will go from this place showing your love to everyone that we know, allowing them to see you through us and to feel your love. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. I'm going to set this. Oh, here come the kids. Okay. What's that? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I need a helper here this morning. Who can help me? Sweet. Just a minute, sweetie. We'll get to it in a minute. Okay, just a minute. Jesus says, come to me, and I will give you rest. Come and be nurtured and nourished by him. As you are ready, please come. I will give you a piece of bread. You will receive the cup, and you can drop your cup in a little basket. So please come. Please come and receive. God's people said, Amen. What a blessed time. What a blessed time. We have been nurtured and nourished freely this morning. God says, you have received from me freely and totally. Now go and share my name, share my love freely. Thank you for worshiping with us today. You know, as we said in our call to worship way back five hours ago when we started this service, we said we are going to go from this place renewed and refreshed as God's people. I pray that that has come true for you today, that you've been open to the Holy Spirit to reach out to you during this time, that you've spent your time worshiping him, not just going through the ritual, but worshiping him and allowing him to lead you and guide you now as you go from this place. Freely, freely you have received. Freely, freely give. Go from this place now in his power. Go in his strength. Go in all the wonderful gifts that he gives you each and every day. And in all that you do, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, go in his peace. <laughs>